All right, as a radio that is so much, uh, you know, uh, you know, it, it passionate about the African voice, uh, we totally uh, keep it African, and we are here to actually, you know, find out from one of those people that have represented the African continent, most especially in the media arena, and that is Nancy Kachungira, our very own uh, from Uganda here. We're super excited to actually have her right here at the home of the African voice, that is MCI Radio. She will actually be uh, speaking to us and answering a few questions in regards to this year's East Fest 2022, uh, looking at local content and, of course, global impact in that particular course. Nancy, it's good and a privilege to have you here. Thank you so much for having me. Nice to be here. Uh, let's start off with a conversation that, uh, you know, came from your key speech uh, today. You were asking some hard-hitting and provocative questions to the audience, and one of them was, you know, are we the right, uh, are we asking the right questions? And, uh, you know, what do you mean when you say right questions to be asked? I think what I mean by that is um, there is a, a huge upheaval around the world of journalism. Uh, different journalism outlets are trying to find ways to survive in the new reality because the digital revolution has changed the way things work newspapers, TV, radio, we didn't have to compete with the online world uh, in times past, but now you find that everybody can be a journalist. As long as you have a phone and an internet connection, you can tell stories. And sometimes you have people breaking news even before the journalists break the news. So within that context, how does journalism survive? And that was the context for the question, are we asking the right questions? Because a lot of news outlets are asking the question, how can we survive? But I think some of the questions we need to ask include some of the things I raised, like, do people trust us? Because we can't survive if people don't trust us. Mm. But we can't survive if we haven't settled um, very thorny questions like, are we objective? Are we impartial? And that's what I mean by asking the right questions. If we uh, have not asked the, re the right questions in that particular regard, does that uh, affect the way people perceive us as journalists? And probably does that also affect their trust to us? I think so, definitely. Because if we haven't asked the question, why should people trust us? It means we will do things or keep doing things that cause people not to trust us. I mean, sometimes you have situations where there's a crunch, you know, it's crunch time, maybe a reporter is sent out to the field. They don't actually know what's going on, but there's a bulletin and they have to appear. So maybe they'll ask, you know, or they'll actually ask the newsroom mm. uh, back at HQ, what should I say? <laughs> so what is the point of having a, a journalist there um, if it's going to be, the information is going to be coming from the newsroom just for the sake of having the TV look the way it should. So I think practices like that are things that we need to interrogate and ask ourselves, why do we do things the way we do them so that we are able to build more trust with our audiences so that they can understand how we collect our news, how we choose our sources. And I think that will just help to build trust with audiences. In our context of uh, global uh, impact, uh, we have been so much impacted by the Western media. And Nancy, you happen to be one of those people working with an exotic media house. You really know how uh, you know uh, news is curated and, of course, to be fed to people the way it is fed. Uh, the African narrative has also been put at the forefront. It should be changed. Uh, do you think now is the time that it should actually be given much more attention? And probably, as uh, an individual who works at the BBC, what is your role in this particular one for you know when it comes to shaping the narrative? Yes, I think I, I can only really speak for myself. And for myself, it's important that as journalists, we represent the world as it is. So where there is an imbalance, it needs to be corrected. Because if there is an imbalance, it means people are not seeing the world as it is. They are seeing a fake representation. So I do see my role as one of expanding what is known about Africa. For a long time, Africa has only been known for poverty, disease, or famine. Because those things are negative, and the truth about news is negative news often sells better. But when it comes to Africa, that's very damaging because there are long histories of colonialism, of slavery, just a long history that makes that even more 
dangerous um, for Africans to be seen in a certain way. So I really see that uh, my role is about expanding those narratives. So what people know about Africa is bigger than the same old stereotypes. And you know, the part that I can play is small, but I think you know, as more of us journalists continue to tell more versions, varieties of the African story, then the globe will get a better understanding of the complexity that exists in this continent because it's a huge continent, 54 countries, 2,000 languages, so many tribes. You just cannot cover it all in one broad stroke, which is what has been happening. So I would really encourage more journalists, wherever you are in Africa, to tell your story from where you are. Well, lastly, Nancy, before I let you go, uh, you've actually uh, quoted a particular quote from one of the people that you do read from, uh, who once said lies have actually made their way into the world uh, as, you know, uh, truth is still putting on their pants. Uh, we live in a, an era where infodemic is also prevailing and, of course, taking a toll as well. I really want to understand, Nancy, from you. Uh, when we still uh, go, on to, go on with the lies that are, are existing, what is the future of journalism if at all we are going to be still fed on lies? And whose role is it uh, to actually eradicate a virus such as? Yes, that's a very, very big and very important question. I think we've all experienced this. You know, your mom or your auntie will send you a WhatsApp and say, this is true. And you'll exactly. say, no, this is not true. But trying to convince that person that what they have shared with you is not true can be very difficult. And that's why dealing with misinformation is a key priority for journalists because when people start to doubt something, they will doubt everything. Even when you say something to them or present news that is true, they will doubt it uh, because there is such a sea of fake news and a sea of you know uh, wrong facts and misinformation. So I do think that as journalists, we need to be innovative. We don't have the answers yet, but we need to come up with ways for ensuring that we can still maintain trust uh, within our ecosystem and within our profession. Amazing. It's really nice, and it's been good having you, Nancy, here uh, You know, at MCI Radio for African Voices. We really want uh, to make the African voice be heard elsewhere. MCI Radio for African Voices. <laughs>